All right, welcome uh, to the Dave and Rich Show. This is just an opportunity for us to dig deeper into the sermon, things that are going on in our church or Bible questions. So uh, we're going to dig in today. And uh, before we get started, Rich usually has some uh, puns or something to kind of lighten the load. But I thought, I, Rich, I want to start with the theological question that kind of came um, up oh no. today. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, uh, if you ever think about whether Adam and Eve ever shared a date. I mean, we know they shared an apple, but. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right, well, how about this? All right. Where was the first tennis match in the Bible? Oh. I don't know. When Joseph served in Pharaoh's court. Oh, very good. Yeah, I can't remember that one. Who was the greatest babysitter in the Bible? I was going to say Moses, but I have been. <laughs> <laughs> Could have been close. David, because he rocked Goliath to sleep. Oh, okay. yikes. I don't know if that's the babysitter <laughs> I want for my children. No, no. But Not good. Okay. Someone else has jokes, and there I just use go. them. <laughs> So we're in Pergamum. 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 Mm -hmm. Wow, I'm saying that really bad. I just want to say this sounds like the world's uh, most incredible community. I know where you dwell, where Satan's throne is. Yeah. Yet you hold fast my name and you did not deny my faith. Even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness, who was killed among you, where Satan dwells. Yes, twice. So I just got to ask the question, and probably this goes for all the churches, right? We have this God's kind of statement and judgment against his people, but he's not engaging where his people live or what's around his people. So why are we having this statement of to the church before we have this statement to the community or to the non-believer? No, that's interesting. I thought of that we, um, we tend to blame our community or our circumstances on our situation. Um, but our community or circumstances are influenced because of the fall, which we're all a part of and all guilty of. Um, our response to those circumstances or our community uh, should be one of trusting in God and living according to his word, regardless of the community or circumstances that we live in. Yeah, I think there's something special about being called, God, call, being called God's people Right, and he wants something different for us. Mm -hmm. And so I think anytime we see some judgment, we see God's coming to his people first and saying, hey, uh, you need to get together first. You need to resolve this before we look outside. God's community is called to um, a higher standard. And um, when we don't live up to that standard, um, it's not because the world around us is not living up to the standard that's the problem. The problem is because God's people are not living up to the standard to which they're called. Which I think is kind of the, the statement we get here, right? Of uh, we kind of, uh, you walked in this idea that there's a progressive movement, right? Of, of kind of this fall into sin, right? There's this acceptance or this ignoring of what's going on. And then we somehow get into the practice of what's been accepted in the world around us, which eventually leads to death. Yeah, I, and we've seen that in our own culture. And you know, sometimes, you know, things change and we just, you know, we kind of, uh, we kind of live with the change or the change is, is neutral in, in, um, in, in its existence. A silly example, but when I was growing up, the only use for kale was a little decoration on the side of a plate when you went to like a dinner house. <laughs> Now we're supposed to put it, it in our garnished. smoothies. It was garnished. Now we're supposed to be putting it in our smoothies. It's and a potato chip now. Oh, you can have goodness. fried kale I, chips. I just, can we please get past the kale stage? But <laughs> like that's just a, a change, right? But then there's other things morally. Um, and, I, and I'll use this example. And I, I did go to Christian high school, but even my friends that went to, to the public high school, um, if you uh, got drunk on a Friday night, I didn't, but let's say somebody <laughs> did. I, there was regret. There was this feeling of, I went to this party and I did this and got carried away and, you know, I shouldn't have done that. I see young people now not just bragging about it, but planning for it. I'm going to do this. 
Yeah, and the acceptance level of getting intoxicated has totally changed in our culture and within our young people. Now, I would say that that has been a progression in our society where it was kind of like, uh, not great, ignored, now accepted. That's a negative progression. Mm-hmm. I think the acceptance of kale is also a negative progression. But I think, <laughs> but don't see, put it on my pizza either. And, uh, and we could go down different ones and everybody's, the problem is that somebody's going to say, well, I like this one and I don't like this one. But when it's contrary to scripture, Romans talks about those who do it and those who approve of it. And we have moved, what, what happens from Pergamum to, oh no, uh, Thyatira is that the move from ignoring it to accepting it has happened, and there's the, the, and I think that's what Romans is speaking about too. So as, as we look at that idea of ignoring or accepting, right? How do we know today what we should ignore or refuse to accept, or or accept is just part of culture? Kale. Mm-hmm versus how do we move into like, oh, this is something that we should engage, um, we should have a stance on, and perhaps even kind of fight, fight for. You know, whether we recognize it or not, we, we read scripture through our lens. And I, and I try to make that point on Sunday with the exam, example of the multiple choice, where somebody said, in our culture, you know, guessing on a multi, multiple choice would be wrong, where our culture, we're It's taught. You. It's taught, right? <laughs> And, and you would be, and I would be irritated with my kids. Like, what do you mean you left a multiple choice? You've got a one in four chance. <laughs> At least A's all the way down. <laughs> so, um, I, but, but that's interesting. Uh, um, you know, example, growing up uh, in the Bible, um, when it talks about um, uh, things that we interpreted as being warnings towards being uh, sexually um, to dress prerogatively or something like that. I'm trying to think of the passage where, you know, Paul talks about covering your head or, or not adorning yourself. Culturally there, women were not wearing short skirts. <laughs> and so it, it's, clearly, it's clearly talking about financial. It's talking about not dressing to the nines on Sunday where somebody's like, oh, and that person makes a lot of money. Yeah. But we interpret it through our lens. So what we're trying to get to is I'm trying to bring up this imperial cult because looking at the lens of which they're looking at is something that we need to apply to. So I forget what your question was, but the, the point, <laughs> um, how, do we, how do we determine which? We, have to, we need to take culture and Bible, make sure that we're looking at both of them separately. Yeah. We don't even have a lawn on this side of the church, but somebody's mowing something out there. It's, this is the joy of uh, working from home now, right? Except <laughs> we're, we're at work. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you can hear that, but the, the weed yeah. eater's really loud. <laughs> I, one of the things I was looking at uh, and, and just thinking over this week is, hey, where, where does this play out? right? And we look at some of the Proverbs of talking about uh, not walking down the street or going near kind of the, the doorways, mm-hmm. yeah, right? Proverbs, yeah. Uh, um, and so like, as we look at that, that's really about, hey, where are you willing to walk and what are you willing to do with that and trying to steer clear? And then today, right. like, we, we don't quite have that issue in Hillsboro, at least that I know of. Um, of what? Of, of needing to walk in different um, doorways or different streets. But as, as I look at something that's, we probably do that I'm just not aware of, um, but more impactful in my life is like my phone and at what access do we have and how easy it is to get into uh, down a path you're not intending to get, especially with our kids, yeah. right? And then, so how do we engage that? What does that look like? How do we uh, hopefully even bring accountability into something? Well, when you think of the progression, I mean, I think it all goes back to Psalm 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked. And so the idea is kind of walking along the, the path with somebody. Um, you're, you're walking with them. You're separate, right? But you're kind of walking down that path who stands in the way of sinners. Now you're taking a stand with somebody. It's not standing in the way of sinners like, no, no, no. It's you, you're taking a stand with them. No, this is okay. Yeah. And then sits in the seats of scoffers. Now you're in a place of leadership where you're now promoting this. And so there's a progression. And what happens is, look, you know, the older we get, the harder it is to admit that that is an issue in my life and it should change. And in, in some ways, it's easier for me to say, how do we keep our kids 
you know, off of going down the wrong things on a phone. I'm not saying you're not wrong. <laughs> but it's harder for me to admit that I've been on the wrong road yeah. for a long period of time and have accepted something as normal when it shouldn't be normal. So leading into the next question, so how does the local church help us fight this progression and this, this movement, especially as we move from kind of ignorance or accepting of what the world is into practicing that? I'll speak just very honestly, and, and people can disagree with me. Um, and maybe it's my personality. My experience has been in the church, and not just in my 30 years of ministry, but in my life in the church, that the church doesn't have, people in the church don't have an issue, for the most part, going to leaders and saying, I see this in your life, and I see this in your life, and I see this in your life. And, um, and so that's been one of the benefits of any ministry is nobody is afraid to tell me. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like we have a very good view of what we do wrong. But I see very little um, amongst people of friends and Sunday school groups, discipleship groups, small groups, where somebody says, I've seen this in your life and it, it's not appealing. I'm worried about you. I'm worried about you. Um, you're argumentative. Um, you're, you can be rude to people. You're condescending. You're, um, you guys talk about your money a lot. We, and I don't see that. Ha- now, if, if I did that, <laughs> and, I, and I probably do, and, and I, but we don't, And now somebody might think the pastor needs to do that, but we have failed to call one another out. Yeah. I think there's this piece of, uh, as we think of the local church, there's something corporately of us coming together, but there's, I I think the healthy thing in here is there's an intimate group that surrounds you Mm -hmm. who has that ability and the responsibility, uh, both that they have taken and you've granted uh, to speak into your life, uh, who knows how to do that well in understanding your story, um, and then is it going to follow up with you, right? Because if all we do is challenge someone and throw the dart and run away, we're, we're both losing the ability to grow. Yeah, I mean, over the years, I mean, you and I have worked together and been on elder boards together. I mean, I there hasn't been a ton, but there's been occasions where I've come to you and I've said, Rich, I want you to look at this in your yep. life. And there have been situations where Rich has come to me and said, I want you to look at this. We don't use those words, but that's the gist of the conversation. Yeah, no, that's it, yeah. And I, I, I can't say that there, I don't have any regrets from having Rich come to me or me go. I've, there's never been a situation where I walked, or, walked away from that going, that was out of line or wrong. No. Um, it's been per- perfectly natural. And I wish that other people experience that in their life. I'm thankful that I experienced that with not just you, but with some other people. Yeah. And I, I appreciate that. Um, but I don't think most Christians experience that. Right. So growing up in kind of in a different church background, it was definitely not the picture mm-hmm. of even around the dinner table of how we kind of discussed life or how mm-hmm. to reach into people um, or how to encourage them. And I don't know why, um, but knowing what I've experienced here with, with you and with uh, other, uh, other folks in my life doing the same thing, I've grown so much out of it. Yeah. More than I can say I would have grown by myself. Um, and I think in a safer environment where I didn't get myself into as much trouble as yeah. I could have. Yeah. Yeah, I grew up in an environment where, um, at least through high school, the idea of that part of discipleship was very real. And so, and, I, and I'm appreciative of that. And some people are listening and going, I don't understand how they're getting to this discussion with the church in Pergamum. And so clearly in the church of Pergamum, there's a group of people that were following a false teaching or practice, combination of both, the, the teaching of the Nicolaitans. And then there was a group, Jesus, John, is, is confronting the church saying, you have those people that are practicing that. You're not doing anything about it. This is the general gist of what I think was going on there in Revelation. And some people will come to me and go, how could be there be a false group in the church and no one say anything? And my answer would be, are you kidding me? 
I, there could be 10 groups get, in get the to, church. Get to know the church better. Because what yeah. it means is you're not engaged enough to know the depth of our brokenness. Yes. Because, you know, we don't, I don't know, you know, I'm sure we have false teaching going around. I think we'll all learn some false teaching we had in our life. But there's so much false practice that goes on in the church. Yeah. And people don't say anything. It's just the way it is. It's just church. It's politics. It's what? It's not really supposed to be that way. No, and that's what breeds uh, the opportunity for, you know, a, a divisive spirit, yeah. for, uh, for conflict and the, the need of reconciliation. But if we don't engage into recognizing that we are going to be tempted to accept and to ignore things yeah. that we shouldn't, and that's going to filter into our practices, the biggest reason we need to worry about this is because it leads to death. Right. And we want to not die ourselves or have the church die, or have anyone else. <laughs> but you could walk in the office and be just off, just be kind of argumentative. And My wife would agree with you. And, and I could say to myself, that's not usually how Rich is. And I might ask him if he's doing okay today or something, but I don't have to go to him and say, dude, you're being a real jerk today. I, I, 98% of the time, you're not. Thanks. That's, that's pretty generous. <laughs> uh, so I can overlook that. If there becomes a practice in your life, yeah. then, then I need to call it out. So I'm not saying we need to get to the point of going, uh, 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 pointing the fingers all the time. But if you're in relationship with somebody and you, and you know their issue and you're not saying something about that, then that's not good. And if you aren't in relationship with someone, but you see something then what it actually should be a call to is relationship be before relationship. judgment and right. chastisement right. Yeah. so that we can understand, how do I get to speak into yeah. this? If, if I'm being drawn and the Spirit's convicting you to, for some reason, pay attention, mm -hmm. listen to that and, and dive into relationship. Yeah, I've, I've had people say, you know, I, I want to come teach the youth or I want to come teach the children. And I just want to say, yeah, you, you know, sometimes somebody has something to say, which I just don't want them to say it unless they're in relationship. Yeah, and, and here's the big thing we talk about. Uh, I think it was a curriculum, Orange Curriculum, who talks about kind of leading small, mm -hmm. right? Being committed and being in relationship and being willing to say, ah, I don't have an answer. Yeah. Is so important. It's good. Especially in those places where I got to say something. No, let's, yeah. like, can we continually say something? Yeah. I think it's important to be committed. Yeah. But that, again, that's relationship. It, it is. And, and, I, and clearly, remember, this is coming from Jesus walking among the the churches. This isn't coming from the outside. This is yeah, which, the which is scary when Jesus knows so much. Yeah, absolutely. And we look out and, yeah. all right, Jesus, just let us know what's going on. Yeah. And absolutely. he is obviously letting loose. <laughs> so. well, that's what I got from today, what did, or yeah, from this think, week. Yeah, I think those were the, the main points. I think uh, it's, it, it's about, uh, uh, you're right, being in relationship, calling out stuff. It's about um, this concept of how we live is not dependent on our circumstances, um, but how we live is dependent on God's word. Amen. So, all right. Well, thanks. Uh, there will be uh, no show next week. Uh, Rich is on vacation, and, and talking to myself is something I try not to do uh, oh. while being recorded. <laughs> At least so, I'll be recorded. Uh, yeah, so we'll uh, take a week, uh, a week or two off, and then we'll be back as we dig into more of the churches. So God bless you. You're dismissed. <laughs> <laughs> Just did a church thing. That's it. <laughs>